Hi everybody, today we're going to be looking a little bit more at the cell cycle. This is Mechanisms of Cancer, and today we're going to be looking at cyclin CDK complexes. So, cyclin CDK complexes aren't really that difficult to understand, um, but they are really, really important in the cell cycle. They accomplish a lot. So, basically what you have is two proteins, and all those two proteins are going to do is just come together to form an active site. Um, that, uh, well, just to form an active site. So if you say this right here is my active site, if you change the shape of the cyclin um, attaching to the CDK, the, the active site changes too. And so it's going to be the piece that changes that helps to determine the specificity of this complex. So you have the two parts. You have the cyclin, which is going to be the variable part, and then you have the CDK, which is the cyclin-dependent kinase, and that's going to be the part that's common throughout. So here's what it would look like if we drew it. Now, you can switch out the cyclin and have, like I said, the CDK complex affect different molecules. But there's going to be another level of control on top of that. You can phosphorylate the molecule in different places, um, either activating it or inactivating it. That's really important, so don't screw that up. So a phosphate group, depending on where it is, can either activate or inactivate a molecule. And as a matter of fact, you can have a single molecule that is activated by a single phosphate group and then inactivated by another phosphate group elsewhere on the molecule. So there's way, many ways to control these things. You're gonna, can, you can control the cyclin CDK complex by changing the cyclin, by destroying the cyclin, by blocking the cyclin's ability to bind to the CDK, by activating the inhibitory site on the site CDK, or activating the active site on the CDK. Um, just so you know, generally no signals are stronger than yes signals. So if I have an inhibitory site and an activating site and both are activated, then I've inhibited the thing overall. All right, so let's take a look at this diagram. Um, it's a little confusing at first, but like I said, we, uh, we just went over this, so all right, take two, try two. Okay, so What we're going to be looking at is the m cyclin CDK complex in action. So this is going to be an example of how it works. So what you're looking at here is the CDK complex and the m cyclin. You're going to notice that the m cyclins, or the cyclins rather, are usually named after the cell cycle parts. So for example, you'll see G1MS, or actually G1S cyclins. Um, or they'll have letter names like cyclin E, cyclin B, and those generally are going to be G1 cyclins or whatever. Okay, so the first thing that's going to have to happen in order to activate this cyclin kind CDK is that it's going to have to bind to the cyclin. That's going to form the active site here, and that's going to determine what this thing can bind to. Now, there's going to be two other enzymes that act on this. This diagram is a little bit confusing, but V1 is actually going to act in inhibiting phosphate, so it's going to add it up here, and CAC is going to activate with another phosphate, so down here. Um, so what you'll have here is a complex that is both inhibited and activated. And as I said, generally it's the no signal that's more powerful, so the no signal is going to inactivate this phosphate. Now, this thing is raring to go. So it went through this process, it wasn't ready here, wasn't ready here, isn't ready here, but there's going to be one removal of a phosphate that is going to trigger this thing to go, and as you can see, it's actually going to generate positive feedback. So it is going to inhibit the inhibitory kinase, V1, which inhibits itself. So this molecule and this molecule, imagine that they're two different ones now. So this one is going to go back and inhibit V1 so that only the activating kinase is adding the phosphate. It's also going to go ahead and loop back on itself and aid CDC25 in activation. So CDC25 is activated by the M cyclin and CDC25 activates the M cyclin CDK complex. 
I know it's a little chicken and the egg problem. There's nothing really I can do about it. I'm not making this stuff up and I can't change it. So hopefully you can live with it. Let's go over that one more time though. So you have the CDK complex over here. It's going to need the m cyclin first of all, to form that active site. Then it's immediately going to be both inhibited and activated by two different enzymes. Those, um, so this complex is now inhibited, activated with an active site. CDC25 is going to remove the inhibit, inhibitory, sorry, remove the inhibitory phosphate and generate the final active MCDK cyclin CDK complex. All right, that is a freaking mouthful. Anyway, so in addition to these positive and feedback systems, um, they're positive feedback because this acts, this molecule acts to increase more of itself. And the m cyclin CDK complex is going to have other functions, and we're going to see those later. So just to give you an idea of what's going on here, I'm going to show you other CDK complexes and, what's, and how they work. Um, <clears throat> so here you see an s cyclin CDK complex. Here you have a G1 CDK complex. And here you have a G1S CDK complex. Uh, this is going to be slightly different in the active and inactive forms. It's going to have an inhibitory protein rather than an inhibitory phosphate. So just so you, so you, just so you know, you're going to see these CDK complexes all throughout. And don't forget, sometimes they're not going to be called CDK complexes. Some of times they're going to be referred to by letters, so cyclin D, cyclin E. Um, but the cyclin part of the name will remain the same, and so will the CDK part. Okay, that's it for cyclin-dependent kinases and cyclins. Um, I hope I didn't bore you too much. I, uh, I hope that you really learn from this and that you become a better person after you watch this video. Um, I'll be the same.